Okay, let's see how we can define our UI elements in Java file. For that, we need to first open our Java file, which exists in app folder, in Java folder, in your package name. It's called main activity. As you can see, there are some pre-written code in here, which Android Studio generates for us. And that's because we have selected an empty activity when we created our project as the template. We could have select no activity and uh, later on create this file ourselves, but with the help of Android Studio, we have found this one. We will be talking about all these new keywords that we don't know anything about them yet, like this class, this public, this extends. We will be talking about all of them in Java session, but for now, we need to know that this uncreate method is the one that will be executed whenever we create our activity. And because our application has only one activity by now, this is the code that will be executed at the time when we run our application. Don't worry about the phrase method that I used. We will be talking about that in Java session as well. Every method starts with a curly brace and ends with a curly brace as well. So we need to write our code inside those two curly braces. In order to get access to a text view, for example, from our UI, we can say something like this. We can say text view. IntelliJ is suggesting me a lot of options. The one that we need is this one that comes from android.widget package. In Java, you have a class equivalent to the exact same UI element. I can define my text view like this. I can say text view. I can name it whatever I want. For example, let's name it text view as well. Is equal to, there is a method in Java which you can use to find your UI elements and that's called find view by ID. As the name speaks for itself, it will find your UI elements by their ID. And the way that we pass the ID to this method is like this. We can type r dot id dot the ID of our text view, which is text view. This r is a special class in Java. It stands for resources or some might say references. It will give you the access to all the resources that you have in your project. This text view is the ID that we have passed to our text view up in here. It should be exactly the same. Now that I have defined my text view, I can change its text by saying text view, the name of my text view, dot set text, this one in here. These are all the methods available in the text view class. We will be talking about that dot operator and also all the methods in here, but for now, let's just use it, dot set text, and I can pass any text that I want inside these parentheses. But in order to pass a text statically to a text view, you need to pass it inside double quotation. For example, I can say hello, yes. Let's run our application and see if this is changing the, our text. You can run your application by clicking on this green triangle up in here. Inside this pop-up window, you can see the different emulators that you have installed on your Android Studio. If you connect your device, your actual device, you can see that as well, but and that has some setups in which I will talk about in future videos. Let's run our application on this Pixel 2. You can click OK and it will uh, take some time if it's the first time that you are running your emulator. As you can see, although I set the text to hello inside my layout file, and because I'm changing it inside this Java file, the text has been changed to Hello Mesa. But our application can be much more interactive. I don't want to change the text of that text view 
immediately when I create my application, I want to uh, change its text when I click on this button. I can define an event listener for my button like this. In my uh, layout file, for this button inside this anchor bracket, I can define an attribute called onClick. This one Android column onClick. I should give it the name of a method in which I will create later on in my Java file. The name should be unique. The name cannot have spaces or weird characters. Let's just call it on btn click. It's giving me a red warning. It says that you don't have this method in your Java file. I can copy it and create this method in uh, the Java file. Outside of the curly braces of this onCreate and inside of the curly braces of this whole class, I can create my method. I am going to type a new syntax in which you haven't seen so far, but don't worry about that. We will be talking about all the details of this onClick. I can say public void the name of my method which I can paste a pair of parentheses a view object another pair of curly brace and uh, this will be the method which will be triggered when we click on a button this is a special syntax and whenever you want to define a click listener or an event listener for your button you can do it this way there are other ways in which we will talk about later on in future videos but for now this is one way and i believe it's the easiest way don't worry about all this view that has been passed to this method and this access modifier and the return type we will be talking about all of them i can copy this two line of code or maybe cut them from this onCreate and paste them inside this onClick method so that we don't change the text of that text view whenever we create our application instead whenever we click on the button let's run it once again the text still says hello and if i click on the button it will change to hello Mason. now that we have seen how we can define our ui element in the java file Let's make our application a bit more interactive. I'm going to get the user's name or whatever the name he or she wants to enter and then say hello to that specific person. The way that you can get the user's input is by using an element called edit text. Let's switch back to our design view in the layout file. In this text option in here, you have a variety of edit text for receiving user's input, things like a plain text, which is a simple text, it can be anything, a password, email, maybe phone number, and everything. Let's just use a plain text for now. You can add it to your project by dragging it. And also let's constrain it to two edges of the screen. And maybe the bottom of this button. Our edit text has this specific ID edit text in which we can use in our Java file to get access to this edit text. I will define uh, my edit text inside the onCreate method. I can do so by typing edit text. Let's call it edit text is equal to find view by ID. I can pass r.id dot the ID of that edit text. Also, you need to know that in Java, whenever you make a sentence, you need to finish that sentence by using a semicolon. The other way, it won't work, or your code won't compile. But how can I get the text of that edit text? Well, by saying edit text, the name of your edit text, dot get text. This will return the text of that edit text, but you need another level of conversion. That's not important, but you just need to pass dot to string in order to make a text. You need to finish your sentence with a semicolon once again. But that's not a good place to get the text of that edit text. I want it inside this on button click 
so that I could uh, set the text of this text view to whatever text uh, is inside the edit text. But if I try to, let's say, use the edit text inside this method, you can see that I'm getting red warnings. And that's because something called the scope in Java. Because we have defined this element inside the curly braces of this onCreate method, its scope is only this onCreate method. And I can't have access to that element from other methods. But how can we overcome that problem? Well, let's write it in another way. Let's delete these two. Instead of defining and instantiating my items at one place, I'm going to split the definition and instantiation. I can define my element outside of the onCreate method within the curly braces of this class. For example, like here, I can say edit text, edit text, and finish my sentence in here. Later on, in my onCreate, I can instantiate it by saying edit text is equal to find view by id r dot id dot edit text by separating the definition and instantiating of your elements you can have access to the edit text from wherever you want inside this class for example from this method i can say edit text and as you can see intellij is suggesting that edit text because the scope of this edit text is beyond the scope of this onCreate. I can say edit text dot get text dot to string in order to get the text of that edit text. But once again, it's not a good place to uh, get the text of edit text because we are not using it, we are just getting it. Well, uh, for that I can cut this line of code from here and paste it inside the parentheses. Whenever you are passing uh, texts dynamically to your uh, text view or whatever you want, you don't need the double quotation, you just can paste it. But of course I need to delete that semicolon. This way we are setting the text of text view to whatever text is inside the edit text whenever we click on the button. Let's run our application and see if it's working. Let's add a name in here. For example, let's say Brad. By clicking on button, the text of the text view is changing to Brad. That's okay, but that's not totally what I want. I want to say hello to Brad and not just uh, print his name. For that, inside the parentheses of this uh, text method, I can add to double quotation a clause and inside the double quotation I can say hello. This way I'm adding two texts together, something called concatenation. We will add hello before whatever text comes inside the edit text. Let's run it once again. Let's type a name in here. Let's say Tom this time. Button. Hello Tom. Okay, I think that's a good progress in this video. In the next video, we will have a quick challenge to make sure that we have learned everything we have talked about so far. See you in the next video.